Um, so over the next uh, 15 to 30 minutes, I will be discussing Horizon's approach to the bioproduction arena. Uh, I'll be talking about how we aim to improve access to existing cutting edge cell line technology and how we'd like to improve the available technology using our expertise in genome engineering. So much of the improvement in the manufacturing of biological molecules in the last 20 years has come from enhancement to media and feed strategies, which allow cells to remain viable for longer while expressing the protein of interest. So in the last 15 years, we've managed to get to antibody titer levels of around about 5 grams per litre, um, and workflows for screening and identifying high-producing clones have evolved, which allows for quicker transition to the clinic through shortened timelines and higher titers prior to full scale-up. The mindset around bioproduction has shifted in recent years, and recently greater emphasis has been given to quality over just pure quantity, uh, particularly in the case of antibody production. However, one of the biggest variables that remains is the host cell line. The CHO genome, although it has been sequenced, is inherently variable, which results in significant changes to the behavior of clones developed from a common parent. So the upside of this is that you are able to find clones which produce high titers um, or optimal glycosylation profiles, for example. But this process itself is based on a mix of serendipity and screening. And we'd like to be able to make it more predictable um, and more accessible to, to the general audience. So, as, I, as, I, as it states here, we are essentially still dependent on a cell line that was derived well over 50 years ago, and since then has evolved minimally. So, there is a wealth of data available, but without the freedom to, to, to operate that's associated with existing gene editing solutions, being able to exploit this data is not easy. So um, there are uh, definite hurdles that are in the way of developing new cell platforms, which is why the, uh, the evolution of the Cho line um, hasn't progressed as far as many would have liked. So for example, regulatory hurdles stand in the way uh, because the existing Cho lines have known safety profiles and um, are well understood with good characterization and testing. And there's a well-trodden path to the clinic. Whilst this is very good from a safety point of view, which is obviously critical from a clinical standpoint, it also encourages the maintenance of the status quo due to the large investment cost and cost of change associated with um, producing new lights. Especially seeing as there's been a large investment in existing platforms and optimization of, of, those, of those platforms that are currently in operation. Equally, the biology of the CHO cell presents its own challenges. So the CHO cell, um, as described, does have a very flexible genome. So this allows, it to, uh, to, this allows us to find high-producing clones, um, but it does lead to its own issues when generating those clones, um, because the, the flexibility of the genome allows the CHO cell to overcome many pressures that have been introduced into the system. One of the reasons that glutamine synthetase null cells, for example, um, have become such a well-established system is because it's such a clean system where the CHO cells have been unable to find a way around the lack of the glutamine synthetase gene. Even if the above uh, problems have been overcome, being able to utilize this knowledge with reasonable freedom to operate in the bioproduction market is very, very difficult. This has led to blocking innovation as any advances have been impeded by technology silos where improvements aren't shared across the community and the high costs and vested interests that are currently associated with existing cutting edge access has limited both innovation and accessibility to these cells. So at Horizon we want to use an open and an inclusive approach to provide access to technology that's currently off limits to most people. And we want to do it in a way that drives innovation using strategic partnerships that shares risk across multiple, par uh, multiple parties. So we want to be able to drive a universal system whilst maintaining value and increasing innovation and progress, and therefore enabling a revolution in the bioproduction um, and show marketplace. Horizon 
has a very good track record in building difficult cell lines. Uh, we have engineered over 500 isogenic cancer cell lines, and we have a very good position to enable this innovative approach due to our expertise and track record in genome engineering. So in many ways, the CHO cells can be seen as cousins of cancer cell lines due to some of their characteristics. For example, um, they both have quite high levels of genetic drift, which is important for high titers and for clone selection, but does make the um, genome engineering experiments very difficult, which is particularly true if double-strand breaks have been initiated um, due to the propensity of the genome to undergo complex rearrangements under these conditions. So we would like to build platforms which enable rapid measurement of critical quality attributes, and then this will uh, facilitate quality by design. So one of the approaches for this is to use our expertise in report lines. For example, we, we have experience with Nanoluck and Halotag, but we are by no means limited to these systems, um, which will allow us to, to produce a whole body of, of different ways of, of, uh, of measuring the output from the from the CHO cell, and to be able to tailor um, tailor the, the CHOs depending on how this works. Um, we are also uh, technology platform agnostic. Now this can be very important because we have access to different recombination technologies such as RAAV, CRISPR, and ZFNs. Now each of these technologies have their own strengths and weaknesses, which depend upon the exact project requirements. So by being agnostic, we can take each approach on its merits and be driven by what is best for the project, not limited by outside issues such as IP or freedom to operate. Finally, the fact that we, have, we don't have a vested interest in other market elements allows us to, to um, be open and innovative in our approach, which allows us to produce the best cell lines and make them accessible to as many people as possible. So we have experience in handling a range of CHO cells, um, and we have also got dedicated lab space uh, with access and enhanced SOPs. And we would like to emphasize, we would like to put the emphasis on more than just knockout technology. One of the reasons for this is that the CHO genome is relatively small, meaning that remaining genes are likely to be critical for the minimal maintenance of health and viability of cells. RAAV provides base pair resolution engineering opportunities, and with access to this proprietary technology, we can accurately knock into the genome. This opens up a whole variety of opportunities for us. For example, we can produce landing pad cell lines, or we can do substitution mutations in the target of interest. For example, we can do a serine to glutamate mutation, which can be used to mimic phosphorylation and create a constitutively active enzyme. Um, if, this, if this turns out that it positively affects critical quality attribute measured by one of our reporter systems. And this flexibility to choose approaches and modifications rather than being limited to knockout technology gives us extra freedom to innovate and to improve the platforms. So with, with this in mind, we have generated our own glutamine synthetase knockout in CHO K1 cells, uh, which were originally sourced from ECAT. The cells uh, were bilelically knocked out where the exon 6 removed, which is required for enzymatic activity. And this knockout was confirmed by protein analysis and then functionally by glutamine dependency. As you can see from these graphs, the, uh, when cultured in, uh, in the absence of glutamine, wild type CHO K1 cells are able to produce their own glutamine from the normal metabolic processes whereas the glutamine synthetase knockout cells are unable to, put, to produce their own glutamine and therefore are reliant on, the, on exogenous glutamine for viability. Our cell line has full traceability based on the CHO-K1 parental line, um, and we used our proprietary AAV technology in order to generate this. So the initial gene targeting event was performed on adherent cells. This has allowed us to take forward the best performing clone based on different performance parameters. Although a cell line adapted to suspension growth and chemically defined animal component free media is required for manufacturing, having this adherent line available has also proved attractive 
to those companies with experience in media and feed optimization who take advantage of the preferential terms associated with the adherent cells as the work, as the work involved in, in adaptation to suspension growth can be incorporated into optimization that would be performed anyway. Having said that, we are also uh, generating a suspension line from the adherent line. Um, the cells have been successfully adapted to suspension growth in chemically defined animal component free media uh, with viable cell densities of around about 6-10 million cells per mil um, and whilst retaining the glutamine dependency. Uh, we are currently optimizing for um, commercial media growth, growth in commercial media. Um, and finally, we will use a, our own vector system to express multiple targets within these cells in a bioreactor setting, and we will be making this data available to the community. Our approach is to share as much of the data generated as possible, and that's data both from ourselves and from our partners or customers, in order to facilitate an open approach to the market that we hope will generate further innovation in the field. So the bioproduction unit is run using resources from existing divisions within the company. And we are also applying for funding from external sources with, uh, with our industrial and academic partners, which will help us drive product development. And we are engaged with key opinion leaders to establish the most attractive technical specification for future products. The reason for this is that as a genome engineering company, we are not bioproduction experts. So we're keen to listen to and take guidance from those who are and use our complementary strengths to drive change and to promote innovation in a notoriously conservative marketplace. So we're using this to develop the platform, um, in all, but basing it on the CHOGS knockout line in order to, have, to derive a whole platform of, of different lines based on targeting multiple genes to drive robust phenotypes. Rather than attempting to identify a single magic bullet using single targeting events, we will target multiple genes to drive complex and overall robust phenotypes that are resistant to the inherent plasticity of the CHO genome. This will take different forms depending on the desired outcome, but can involve generating entire new pathways or hitting multiple regulators to alter or modulate different pathways in different ways. We have undertaken primary market research in order to understand exactly what our customers need. We can facilitate the improvement, but we need to understand which improvements are most critical to our customers and why this hasn't been achieved up to now. We have a core philosophy of allowing us access to cutting edge cells while driving openness and innovation within the community. And by doing this, this has led to us adopting a disruptive position in what is traditionally a conservative marketplace. And the fact that we're technology agnostic allows us to focus on what our customers need, not on what we're limited to being able to provide. With regards to our licensing models and uh, the approach to working with our partners, we can take different approaches depending on how the customer wants to share the risk. We're willing to share risk with our customers by providing expertise at a relatively reduced cost, or we can provide a pure fee-for-service option or an arrangement somewhere in between the two. We're flexible in our approach and happy to be guided by our customers and their resources and needs. However, I would like to stress that at no point will we take any product royalties and we, are, we will not vary our project price dependent on the perceived value of the gene target. Our editing rate is flat rate within the context of each model that I've described. So to summarize, we have developed expertise in handling adherent and suspension show cells for successful gene engineering. We have entered into a commercial licensing agreement with Heisen Pharmaceuticals last year, and we continue to build on that partnership. And we are also in the process of developing a number of custom projects for a leading farmer and contract manufacturing organization. We have also recently commenced a new custom project with a new client in recent weeks. Under all, um, under all conditions, commercial licenses represent the desired endpoint in each case. 